To the question of why this took so long is that the Vatican and the top officials have been intransigent in recognizing that there is a global crisis, not just in Minnesota, but across America and across the globe, and that the top officials are responsible for it. In other words, they have lived in denial. And, um, and refuse to recognize that they, the top officials, are the problem and the source of it. The resignations forced under pressure and accepted by the Vatican demonstrates an incremental realization that they have to do something. And this is something. Is it enough? No, but it's something and it's something real, and where it goes from here is what counts the most. Jim Keenan said they have to have rules, but we say they have to have the rules and they have to take the action. And that means holding those at the top most accountable for the choices they've been making for decades, accountable. Removing them, prosecuting them, not protecting them and their careers and coming clean with their role in the history that is yet to be fully done. So it is a beginning. It is an incremental beginning. It is a sign from Rome that uh, they're ready to start moving and we're ready to help them. And we're gonna push them there uh, until we know that um, one or two resignations are not gonna bring the change. Complete disclosure and exposure of the past and all those who are complicit, such as this Archbishop and the Bishop that was forced to resign today are held accountable in some measurable, real way. That will bring change, that will bring safety, and that gives us hope we're on to a new day. There, there are more. There, there are more than just these two that need to step down. And if you know my history, I'll call up McDonough and say you need to step down. Yeah, and this isn't I, just about two individuals. It isn't just about one archbishop or yeah, one auxiliary bishop. This is about the the top officials at the top uh, and the conscious choices that have been made time and time again by those present now and their predecessors and others in Minnesota, just like them, making the same choices for the same reasons to protect themselves. So while this is pertinent to one archbishop and one bishop, and it is important, it's an incremental step in the right direction. I want them to have a safe environment when they go. I want them to be able to drop their children off at the at the, uh, the daycare or the, the religion class with a confidence that what happened to me isn't going to happen to them. You know, um, these predatory priests are good at what they do. Uh, my priest had dinner at our house weekly. You know, he, he, was, he was one person I knew that never had to knock on our front door. He was able to walk right in. Um, that's crazy that a pedophile was able to walk right in and be revered. Um, that's the system that we need to change. I'm not trying to, to, to blow apart a church. I don't want to see them come down. I want to see them be a safe environment for those people who get a lot of life out of them. I think when you, you touched on it when you said if this happened in any other organization, the, the shareholders and the stakeholders would rise up and, and, you know, oh my God, and the top would come down from there. It's the same thing with the church. The, what we need to see is the, the people in the pews finally standing up and saying enough. I, we need everybody on Sunday morning to stand up and say, why is this happening? What's going on? Why are some priests still supporting abusive priests? Why is this still happening? The people in the pews need to stand up and say it enough and take back their church. Again, we don't want the church to come down. We want people to take back the church. Instead of having it be a seat of power and, and a prestige and, and position, go back to the basic rock of the church. It's all about Christ and about doing good in the community and taking care of, taking care of family. 
That's what that's where the church needs to shift back to it, and the people in the pews need to stand up and take action about that. I think there's a, a big pervasive um, viewpoint that our priest can do no wrong. We can't um, question what happens on the hill. We can't question what, what these people do because they're so revered and, and that's the way it's been all our lives. But people do need to stand up and they do need to take action. They do need to take their church back. And until that happens, I think a lot of this is still going to take place. I mean, it's going to be a, a slow grind to have it happen until people say enough. Look, the, um, the decision by the Vatican to remove the archbishop and another bishop is an important and incremental step. Uh, but it's far from what needs to be done. They have operated above the law and we have been uh, screaming and survivors have been complaining and now bringing suits in Minnesota to put pressure on. And that pressure has brought exposure, those civil actions have brought disclosure and the body of evidence that has been developed was now turned over to the prosecuting authorities and it was inevitable that the Archbishop would be required to be resigned by the Pope and at least other officials would be required to go. But the real problem is all the officials at the top have been a part of this serious problem. This is a systemic problem. So one resignation or two resignations by two men today is progress, but it isn't the kind of thing that's going to change the system until we see a high level commitment to have all those who are a part of the problem face reckoning. And so as comforting as it is to see some action taken uh, and it's the symbol of them not being to operate above the law as they have, it gives us comfort, but it doesn't give us relief that there is the change uh, that has to be uh, and is yet to be. So, Well, you know, for, for three decades we've been working with survivors, mostly survivors who are private and will remain private. Al and Jim chose to go public. And when we began this, deck, this journey 30, over 30 years ago, people did not believe it was a problem, and they thought it was a few priests, like the Vatican said. Uh, today, people are starting to realize the magnitude of it, and so we in the Child Protection Movement, working with courageous survivors, and the legislature opening up the law, giving them a chance to have a chance in court, has brought forth a tremendous and transformative change. And I think we're in the middle of a reformation uh, under, under pressure and scrutiny. I think heat and light has brought and is bringing change. Is it fast enough? No. Is it real? Absolutely. And it gives us great hope. It gives us promise. And it gives us uh, a reminder of how much more work has to be done.